All right, it's uh, pretty cold out and windy as fuck out as well. We're, we had a temperatures about negative 10 degrees out last night in my area, but as you can see, it's running. And I got a makeshift gas tank here. It is leaking a little bit on the bottom, but it's not bad. Uh, two poles, this thing started right up. Uh, put the engine oil in and absolutely no problem. The only thing I probably have to fix here is uh, it's not registering on the tachometer for some reason. I might have counterwound it or something like that. Uh, they wrapped it around the coil wire and then around the coil plug itself. And I'll probably just need to adjust that after. But for right now, I'm just uh, going to let it run for at least two hours, whatever fuel is left on this, and we should be good. And we are done with the break-in period. I currently have three hours running on gasoline, and uh, I've drained the carb out. And I've and but when I say drain the carb out, I mean I run the engine dry. And then this little tube right here, there's a little uh, screw. If I can try to focus in on it, um, it's like a little pet cock valve for the fuel bowl. You open this up, and drains the and it's a little opening right here. And it, uh, you could drain the fuel bowl out that way. Now, I don't know if the Honda has that, but I found that uh, pretty darn sweet. Um, but it ran great. I ran it for, again, three hours. Uh, I connected up the motor snorkel. And as you could tell, it's uh, nice and out of the way. And um, really, and I also reconnected the original gas line. Not that I'm going to be using it with the with this uh, particular gas tank and it throttled up throttled down uh, did everything that it was uh, supposed to do um, I re when I d uh, did put the snorkel in I did uh, test it on gasoline once more to make sure that the that probe wasn't causing any trouble and loaded it all the way up to 1600 watts continuous with uh, my electric heater and it took it like a pro nothing wrong with it at all so uh, I'm not even gonna worry about that uh, that probe issue uh, just to go over some quick details, as you can see, the um, the demand regulator I mounted here um, with uh, some makeshift, I had some leftover aluminum pieces that I had lying around the house, and uh, you know I attached it to the uh, in between the bottom of the foot there, and I just put some uh, fender washers and uh, some spacer washers there, uh, and I had to do it to all four feet because you want the feet to be even so that the uh, um, generator sits level. And other than that, uh, if, if you are going to do go this route, or maybe someone else can find a better way to install a bracket uh, without actually having to drill into the plastic or just using the pre-existing holes, um, it's not easy to take these uh, these rubber feet off. Uh, from this, to give you an example, this one's the easiest one to get to. There, it's not a stud that's built into the plastic or the housing. It's just the nut sitting on top there. So you need to actually get a wrench on this hold it and then loosen up the bolt. Uh, that one's easy to get to. This one in the corner is okay to get to. You'd have to remove this whole side piece in order to get to it so you can get your wrench in there. And that's really what you're gonna need to do if you wanna install the demand regulator here. Uh, the one in the corner here, you just remove this uh, panel with four screws and you're all set to go. And as you could see, uh, I got the hose coming right out here and then it goes up and around, nice clear spot and comes right up into the uh, motor snorkel. And finally, the one in the corner here, and I gotta cover the serial number, guys. Sorry, I don't, don't want my war warranty uh, destroyed. But uh, the one in the back uh, here, this is probably the worst one to get to. You need to remove this panel, six screws, and then uh, you need to remove, there's, a, there's basically, if you see the three bolts down here, there's three bolts on the other side. You have to take those out, you have to take uh, the screws that, uh, mate the uh, handle off and you don't necessarily need to take this half of the uh, machine off you just need to be able to pry it away just a little bit so you can get your wrench in there and then you can take the foot off uh, just be very very careful you're going to need to have very small fingers in order to uh, twist the uh, nut back on there uh, and bolt it down so the testing on propane is going to have to wait till tomorrow or until the weather gets better right now it's about Eh, about 7.30, almost 8 o'clock at night. And uh, right now we're going through a really bad cold spell in my area. Uh, checked my phone. Uh, currently it is uh, negative 4 degrees outside. So as you might imagine, propane requires heat. 
uh, in order to expand from a liquid to a gas. And even for my 100 pound uh, propane tank, which is maybe about, you know, three quarters full, uh, I, I just got it filled maybe about a month or two ago. And it's so cold out that the gas pressure inside the tank is too low to support even uh, running a little generator like this. What I had to do was I had to push the primer button in and hold it in for it to run. And it actually ran quite smoothly. The problem is to keep it running because there's insufficient gas pressure inside the tank. So I brought it inside here in my back room where my furnace is and um, just going to let it warm up for a day or so and we'll uh, try the uh, try fuel kit uh, once again with on the propane but I don't foresee any major problems with it again it uh, it ran really well with the gasoline and I was able to get it running if I held the button in and then I adjust the low block as such so there's maybe two or three uh, I can't really get it too well guys sorry there's like two or three no yes yeah, th three threads uh, just sticking out on the load block there and that probably will change anyway because once the gas pressure inside the tank is adequate um, then we should I should have to go and adjust it once again and then I'll try and low test it so another thing too and this might be something to mention as well is that uh, in order to get this back on you gotta get those like little notches on the bottom here and trying to do this with one hand is not really the most ideal but I did allow a little bit of a ability to flex this in and then get it in and I'm gonna have to put the camera down to do this okay there we go sorry I needed both hands to shove this thing back on and then what I'll do is I'll put the two screws back on there as such but as you can see I gave myself just enough room to go ahead and hit the primer button as needed and if I really really wanted to um, it's in between washers where the 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 foot is on there nice and secure, but I could always swing this out of the way if I really had to. But I do allow some some bit of a flexibility to get this off if I really needed to. And the cool thing is that this doesn't have uh, the gas smell in it. And finally, for today anyway, uh, this was the main goal of being able to put this on. As you can see, it's very, very tight. Um, doesn't really give you a lot of space so this is the best way to install it is to put the regulator on the side and while this does stick out a little bit I'm not worried about that at all and then it's got the thing for the gas cap and yeah so you guys get the picture so the next part of the video will be uh, low testing it and we'll go from there